Bound by secrets, strangers on a fateful train. The rhythmic clattering of wheels against the tracks provided a soothing backdrop to the train journey. Guy Haynes stared out of the window, his mind wandering through the intricate designs of his architectural dreams. He was a man with aspirations as grand as the structures he imagined, en route to meet his girlfriend, Anne. He looked forward to sharing his recent accomplishments and discussing their future together. Unbeknownst to him, this train ride would soon become a turning point in his life. As the train pulled into a station, the compartment door slid open, and a man of peculiar appearance entered. His eyes gleamed with an unsettling intensity, and his charismatic smile seemed almost forced, as if masking deeper emotions. This man introduced himself as Charles Bruno, a name that seemed to linger in the air long after it was spoken. Bruno was an heir to a vast fortune, yet his demeanor bore no resemblance to his privileged background. Seating himself across from Guy, Bruno initiated a conversation, his words carefully chosen and laced with a strange sense of familiarity. They spoke of travels, dreams, and the unpredictable paths that life often took. Despite an odd feeling that there was more to Bruno than met the eye, Guy found himself surprisingly engaged by the enigmatic stranger. As the miles rolled on, Bruno's casual demeanor underwent a transformation, shifting into a more sinister tone. It was during this part of the journey that he revealed his true intentions. With an air of nonchalance, Bruno disclosed his intense hatred for his father, a wealthy man who dictated every aspect of Bruno's life. In a chilling turn, Bruno made an unthinkable proposition to Guy. I can rid you of your troubles, Bruno began, his voice taking on a darker tone. Your wife, Miriam, who you're desperate to divorce, I can make her disappear. Guy's eyes widened in shock, his heart racing as he struggled to process the implications of Bruno's words. The idea seemed absurd, bordering on madness. Yet the seed of this dark offer had been planted, taking root in the depths of Guy's mind. A mixture of anger, disgust, and intrigue swirled within Guy. He scoffed at Bruno's proposal, brushing it off as a macabre joke. But despite his dismissal, the thought lingered, gnawing at the edges of his conscience. Days turned into weeks, and Guy found himself grappling with his complex emotions. His marriage to Miriam had become a suffocating trap, with her refusal to grant him a divorce intensifying his frustration. The memory of Bruno's chilling proposition remained a persistent presence in his thoughts, and desperation began to cloud his judgment. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, Guy's phone rang. The caller I displayed an unfamiliar number, but his heart sank as he heard Bruno's voice on the other end. Bruno's words were calm, almost detached, as he delivered the chilling news. Miriam had met her end. The implications of Bruno's involvement were unmistakable, and panic gripped Guy like a vice. You've seen what I'm capable of, Bruno whispered ominously. Now, it's your turn. Fulfill your side of the bargain. The weight of guilt and fear settled heavily upon Guy's shoulders. He had become ensnared in a web spun by a man whose motives were as twisted as the proposition itself. Standing on the precipice of a moral abyss, Guy embarked on a journey he could never have fathomed. He found himself at the gates of Bruno's father's grand estate, his heart pounding in his chest. The mansion stood before him, a looming specter of wealth and power its grandeur contrasting starkly with the enormity of the act Guy was about to commit. With every step he took, his mind raced with a tumultuous mix of emotions, fear, anger, and self-loathing. The walls seemed to close in on him as he navigated the dark corridors of the mansion, each step a chilling reminder of the choices that had led him to this point. As he stood in the shadow of his own actions, the weight of guilt bore down upon him, threatening to consume him entirely. The act he was about to commit felt like a collision of his dreams and nightmares, 
a stark divergence from the life he had once envisioned. He reached the appointed room, where the man he had come to eliminate lay asleep, blissfully unaware of the impending doom. The dim moonlight cast eerie shadows across the room, emphasizing the gravity of the situation. Guy's trembling hand clutched the instrument of destruction, his breath ragged as his conscience waged war within him. The conflicting forces of morality and desperation tore at his soul, leaving him paralyzed in a moment that would define his existence. As the seconds ticked away, Guy's mind was flooded with memories of Anne, his girlfriend who had been waiting for him, unaware of the dark path he had been led down. He thought of the life they had dreamed of together, the love they had shared, and the future that seemed so distant now. The stillness of the night was broken only by the distant sound of a train passing, a haunting reminder of the decision Guy had to make. In that frozen moment, a voice within him screamed for him to stop, to reconsider, to choose a different path, but the weight of his choices, the insidious influence of Bruno's proposition, and the suffocating grip of his circumstances all converged to propel him forward. Guy closed his eyes, the weight of his hand on the instrument becoming unbearable. He was on the precipice of an irreversible act, one that would forever alter the course of his life. The internal struggle reached its climax. And just as he was about to make his fateful choice, a voice cut through the silence. Stop! The word hung in the air like a lifeline. Guy's eyes snapped open, and he turned to see Anne standing in the doorway, her expression a mix of disbelief and horror. In that moment, time seemed to stand still, and the reality of his actions crashed down upon him with a force he could no longer ignore. Tears welled up in Anne's eyes as she took in the scene before her. Guy, trembling and poised to commit an unthinkable act, and the man lying unconscious in the bed, blissfully unaware of the impending danger. The weight of the situation bore down on her, and she felt a mixture of shock, sadness, and a determination to save Guy from crossing a line from which he could never return. Guy, please. Anne's voice quivered as she stepped closer, her gaze locked with his. This isn't who you are. I know you're struggling, but we can find another way. We can find a way out of this nightmare. Guy's grip on the instrument of destruction began to loosen, his conflicted gaze shifting between Anne's pleading eyes and the ominous figure lying on the bed. The turmoil within him was palpable. The battle between his desperation and his fundamental morality raged on. As Anne approached, her outstretched hand trembled. An offering of hope in the midst of darkness. Guy's breathing grew ragged, and a single tear escaped his eye. Coursing down his cheek, the realization of how far he had strayed from the person he wanted to be crashed over him. And in that moment, he let the instrument fall from his hand, clattering to the floor. The sound echoed through the room, a symbol of the shattering of his resolve. He collapsed to his knees, his body racked with sobs, the weight of his choices and the impending consequences overwhelming him. Anne knelt beside him, wrapping her arms around him in a comforting embrace. We'll face this together, Anne whispered, her voice filled with determination. We'll find a way to make things right. But we can't let Bruno control us any longer. Amid the darkness that had clouded Guy's judgment, Anne's presence was a beacon of light. Her unwavering belief in his goodness, her refusal to let him fall victim to the machinations of a twisted mind, ignited a spark of hope within him. Together Guy and Anne left the room, leaving behind the shadowy specter of the choice that had nearly consumed him. As they emerged into the moonlit hallway, a sense of clarity began to wash over Guy. The path ahead was uncertain, fraught with challenges and consequences, but he knew that he had to break free from the chains that Bruno had wrapped around him. The next morning, news broke of a mysterious death at the Grand Estate. The circumstances were murky, shrouded in secrets that would never fully come to light. 
Bruno's fate remained a question mark, his web of manipulation and darkness unraveled, yet his ultimate destiny unknown. Guy and Anne face the aftermath of their ordeal together, determined to rebuild their lives and leave the darkness behind. The journey would be long and arduous, filled with difficult choices and moments of doubt. But their love, their shared determination, and the power of redemption carried them forward. In the end, the train journey that had once seemed ordinary had become a crucible of transformation. Bound by secrets and shadows, Guy had been given a chance to confront the darkest aspects of his own nature and choose a different path. And as he looked out of the window once more, the rhythmic clattering of the wheels against the tracks provided not just a soothing backdrop, but a reminder that life's journey was marked by the choices one made, choices that could lead either into the abyss or toward the light.